Hi. Happy New Year 2016. This is Transparency in Government, and we're back again with our town manager, Kevin Smith. And we're going to do a review of what happened in 2016. It's going to have to be pretty fast-paced because a lot has happened. It's been amazing, actually. So let's just get started right away right. so we can use our time efficiently. Happy New Year. Thank Donnie. you. Thank you. 2016 to you is going to be great. Yes. So uh, there was a lot, obviously, that did happen uh, in 2015. Um, you know, one of the perhaps the biggest event on the economic development front is uh, Pettengill Road. Yes. Opened uh, to the public mm -hmm. and has been uh, facilitating a lot of new business, a lot of new tax revenue, and a lot of new jobs up in that area. Uh, well, that's good to hear because that's what we were promised was going to happen. What we were promised, and that's yeah. what happened. That's uh, good. You know, you have the. Now, UPS Prout Whitney facility, which is open and operational. You have the FedEx facility, which is also uh, open and operational as well. Milton Katz putting the final touches wow. on their building. It looks beautiful if, mm -hmm. if you've had the chance to go by there. And uh, as a result of that, we added almost $90 million of new valuation to the tax rolls uh, okay. last year. Uh, so, uh, do we know how many jobs that might have generated in the community, or is that too hard to well, it, it, nail down? Well, just those <coughs> facilities alone are mm -hmm. going to generate uh, probably about fifteen hundred jobs. That's great. Just in that one area, which is it's it is great. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. Uh, it's great for the the whole region uh, as well. Uh, and so, consequently, as a result of that, the taxpayers in this town saw for the second straight year, a decrease uh, in their taxes. And they probably probably noticed that when they opened their tax mm -hmm. bills up yeah. uh, this December. So things are moving in the right direction. Uh, we've got two more large facilities that are set to move into that area. Now that Pettengill Road is built, you can go straight mm -hmm. through. There's an intersection right in the middle. Right. Uh, you have two roads, North Loop and South Loop, which are going to be re renamed in the very near future. Something more creative. I can't. I can't <laughs> tell you what the names are because it would give away who's coming in. Uh, okay. Um, but there's there's going to be a 300,000 uh, manufacturing facility, 500 jobs uh, as a result of that, going on the North Loop side. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, uh, a million square foot facility. A million. A million square feet. One of the largest buildings in New Hampshire uh, that'll be going in on the South Loop Road. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And those two facilities alone mm -hmm. will, will almost double the valuation of that area wow. uh, alone. That's so, amazing. So it's it is it's it, it's wonderful. Um, you know, you, you kept hearing if if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And as I like to say, uh, they came and they built it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's it's a great success mm -hmm. story at all levels. So we had the official ribbon cutting uh, yeah. of of that road um, right before Christmas, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of dignitaries showed up, and it was uh, truly a, a great effort all around. So Sounds that was great. one exciting thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, looking at another uh, thing that happened, of course, we had the uh, budget and Warren articles approved mm -hmm. um, back in March uh, as part of that. Or February? Nope, March, March? of 2015. Okay. Okay. Uh, as part of that, we had uh, four new firefighters mm -hmm. uh, that were added to the personnel at the fire department. Uh, and we also had a new school resource officer mm -hmm. added as well. Um, that school resource officer has been hired. Uh, and is currently going between the elementary schools. Um, the So far, two of the four firefighters mm -hmm. uh, have been hired in the fire department. Uh, the first year was always planned to be a staggered year of when right. those hirings were going to take yeah. place. So um, we expect two more to be coming on between mm -hmm. now and uh, the end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's that happened as well. Um, other things going on, we had the workforce housing amendment uh, the zoning change that was passed. Right. Uh, you know, there was some concern over how much workforce housing was coming into Londonderry, where it was going. And what we found is that in some areas of our workforce housing uh, ordinance, some areas were very broad uh, as to where workforce housing could be located within town. And some areas of it were very restrictive, such mm -hmm. that the ZBA was giving out waiver after waiver, or variance after variance, I should say. Uh, and so, uh, the whole thing was looked at, reworked, 
and now we feel we have a very uh, good workforce housing uh, zoning ordinance going forward. Okay. Um, you can also start to see one of the approved workforce housing uh, projects going up uh, off of Perkins Road, um, almost right mm -hmm. behind the sleep in. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've yeah. been down there yeah. lately, but if you're driving down Perkins Road now, you mm -hmm. can almost see a straight shot right to the highway uh, as a lot of trees have been cleared. Wow. Um, that's a. I'm totally against tree clearing. I like trees. <laughs> A lot of well, and I we, and we got a lot of them. To. We, you, you know, to. I mean, if you look at New Hampshire as a whole, uh, what is something like 98 <laughs> percent of the state is forested, uh, and we got a lot of it in in Londonderry. We're yeah. very fortunate yeah. to have a lot of trees and a lot of conservation land in town. Uh, but we have development too, and mm -hmm. that's a you know we natural thing thing that yeah, happens. We need it. So for 240 units, mm -hmm. uh, half 50 percent workforce, 50 percent market value uh, units going in behind the sleep in, mm -hmm. and that uh, those are now under construction. It's the Wallace Farm uh, yes. um, development yeah. there, mm -hmm. uh, and then right now there's another project going through the planning board process uh, off of Stonehenge Road. Uh, that I believe calls for something like 280 units total, mm -hmm. again, 50% uh, workforce. So uh, so that's happening. You know, that was a, a big development in, in 2015. Um, looking at some other things here, exit 4A, um, you know, that, it, that got a big boost uh, in 2015 whereby uh, it was originally on the governor's 10-year highway plan to start in right. 2024. Yeah. yeah. We worked very hard with uh, DOT officials, uh, with uh, the governor's office, and with the executive council uh, to get that project expedited mm -hmm. as a part of the I-93 winding process. And, and so did Derry help with that? Derry was helpful as well. Uh, you know, both communities sent letters mm -hmm. uh, to DOT, um, and uh, we're all a, a part of a, a memorandum of agreement now, uh, the New Hampshire DOT, London Derry, and Derry, as to what our roles and responsibilities with the project are. Um, but we were able to get that moved uh, up five years on the highway transportation okay. plan. So now it's slated to begin in 2019 as opposed to 2024. Mm -hmm. And that was important because the I-93 widening project is supposed to be completed in 2020. So it made sense yeah. to us that at least construction on mm -hmm. 4A begin prior to the completion of I-93 being that widened. That does make sense. Right? Yes. You, you don't want to go back and open the whole thing back up again. I swear sometimes all they do is mo move one pile of dirt over there and then bring it back over yeah. here. So. <laughs> So that was, uh, I think that was a huge accomplishment uh, in, you know, to get that, get that done. And, and considering how long it's been hanging out there, waiting to get since done. Since the 80s. Yeah. You know, since I was in grammar school. Yes, you were. <laughs> showing my age, Dottie, showing my age. I think you were in grammar school, too, at that time. I was time. just a year or two ahead of you, Okay, I think. that's what I thought. Yeah, I, re <laughs> I re remember you when I was graduating. Um, and uh, you know, and and you know, there's other still ongoing issues such as the Kinder Morgan pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's still yet to be worked out on whether or not that's going to get approval. It's currently right. before um, you know the the feds at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, they've filed with FERC. They've filed with the site evaluation committee in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that's that's going to be an ongoing issue uh, well into 2016. 2017 okay. and so we can continue to keep a close eye uh, on that particular uh, project as well as it now, will affect certain areas of Londonderry. And is there any recourse if we decide we don't want it here at all? Well the town council has issued a, a resolution stating their opposition mm -hmm. to the pipeline going through Londonderry uh, and uh, we have sent letters to FERC uh, noting our opposition mm -hmm. to the pipeline, um, you know, where we've been hesitant to get embroiled in a uh, protracted legal argument uh, oh, yeah. with them. We did that when the pipeline came through Londonderry years ago, mm -hmm. spent tens of, tens of thousands of dollars only to have a pipeline coming through Londonderry. That's uh, one of the reasons why I asked, yeah. So we're, we're cautious mm -hmm. not to spend a lot of money there are municipalities that are currently doing that, mm -hmm. municipalities who are also affected by the pipeline. Uh, but we have, again, noted, made our 
notice on record to mm -hmm. FERC and to the New Hampshire Site Evaluation Committee uh, that the Londonderry Town Council opposes uh, the pipeline efforts. Okay. Uh, so that, again, that'll be a, an ongoing issue well into this year and, uh, and probably beyond this year as mm -hmm. well. So uh, those were a number of the, the big happenings yeah. in 2015. Now, of course, we're looking forward uh, to 2016. Uh, where we're, we're expecting another healthy year on the economic development front. Okay. Um, you know, uh, right now we're putting the budget, the final pieces of the budget together. Um, it's, it's been a relatively, I want to say, easy budget session thus far. If anyone's watched the public hearings and the, the budget workshops between the council and the budget committee, uh, in large part because um, the way the budget process works now, where you have a default budget mm -hmm. and a proposed budget, you know, your, your default budget is uh, any contractual increases from the prior year minus all one-time expenses. Right. Um, and you've had uh, largely the, well, the same town council now since uh, 2011 or 12. They've looked at this budget every single year. They know they where have a learning curve. there's no learning curve and they know, you know, where historically uh, things have been underspent. Mm -hmm. They've they've done away. They've cut those mm -hmm. areas. And so I think it's the the opinion of the council now that we're at a point where everything that could be cut out of the budget has been cut out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you know, Councillor Frieda said at, at a one of the beginning meetings unless we want to squabble over whether we need 100 boxes of paper clips or 30 <laughs> boxes there's really not a whole lot to do on this budget because we're not looking at any uh really any increases mm -hmm. at all aside from your contractual increases mm -hmm. so um so in that sense it's been a relatively smooth uh flowing uh budget season um so there is a second public hearing on the budget on January uh, the 14th, I believe. That's a Monday evening. Okay. Um, I hope I have that date right. Or maybe it's the 18th, whatever. Monday the 14th or Monday the 18th. People have a little calendar. Oh, here, see if that well, Dottie, that's perfect. <laughs> so it's Monday the 18th. Okay. So that's the second public you hearing. We do not want to put out misinformation. We do not want to do that. And then the warrant, uh, provided things go smoothly that evening, the warrant will also be set mm -hmm. uh, that night as well for the deliberative session, which will be February the 6th. So okay. the morning of February 6th is the deliberative session where the residents can show up mm -hmm. and um, you can't change articles. What you can do is you can cut cut or add money mm -hmm. to articles. Mm -hmm. um, so you can't change the wording and the intent of the article per se, uh, but you can uh, change the funding mechanisms uh, in those articles. So, uh, and then I would also note, um, very important that the filing date for, um, uh, for boards, mm -hmm. excuse me, for elected, elected positions, positions. Uh, that opens up on January the 20th and runs that's a wednesday and it runs through friday january 29th mm -hmm. so um, there are two town council positions that are up uh, among some other positions so which councilors are up this year uh this year is uh tom uh, uh, tom dolan mm -hmm. and john farrell mm -hmm. uh, are both up this year um i believe both intend to run again but it is the, they're open seats so anybody mm -hmm. can run for these seats uh, and again, that opens up on January the 20th. Um, and we'll post all of the positions on our website so people can mm -hmm. see what positions are available. And all of these dates end up being posted on the um, different access channels, the bulletin boards, the yep. information's there too, because I'm sure you didn't get all of that written down as quickly as I right. was saying it. Yeah. So, um, so that's you know important for people mm -hmm. to keep in mind. Yeah. And then the election uh, and the vote on all of the school and town warrant articles will be on Tuesday, uh, March eighth. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, March eighth. So, and you know we also continue at this time to negotiate uh, the town contracts. Um, we have a number of them that are up now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we continue to have, I think, very productive meetings with uh, the different unions in town to try to come to agreement on uh, contracts yes. as well. Uh, so, 
you know, so there's, uh, I, I can't stress enough for people to, um, you know, keep abreast of what's mm -hmm. going on, if you can, to show up to deliberative session. It's not an all day thing. No, it goes not. from it goes like very, nine very to 12, now, yeah. you know, it, it is quickly. You can yeah. watch it on TV, you can yeah. show up to the meeting. And of course, getting out to vote in March mm -hmm. uh, will be the big thing too. And don't too. forget to register. Gotta register to vote. Yeah. Supervisors and of the checklist make themselves available. Dottie, even before that March election, mm -hmm. we also have a presidential primary, primary election. Yeah. And that's Tuesday, February 9th. Mm -hmm. So people, you can register that day. Uh, I think you also have up until January 20th to register as well uh, before the primary election mm -hmm. day on uh, February the 9th. Um, but again, people just, all they need to do is go to the town clerk's mm -hmm. office and we can get them all registered. That'll be February the 9th okay. for that presidential. Uh, there's one other date, if you mentioned it, forgive me, but um, what is the deadline for warrant articles, petition warrant articles? Petition warrant articles. The deadline for that is uh, January the 12th. Okay. So if you're looking at submitting a petition warrant article uh, and have the required number of signatures, mm -hmm. uh, you'll want to submit that by January the 12th. Uh, I would strongly urge, even though we, we don't have a lot of days left between now uh, and the 12th, well, in fact, mm -hmm. you know, as of this taping, we, there's only two business days, mm -hmm. um, you know, have the language vetted by our attorney so that we can make you aware of, you know, whether or not it conflicts mm -hmm. with state law, if it conflicts with the town charter, okay. um, because uh, we want to make sure whatever's being put on the ballot mm -hmm. um, is, is not going to conflict with those things, otherwise it doesn't have any teeth to it. Right. So, um, you know, and, and we'll provide that at no cost to the person mm -hmm. that's looking to submit a petition warrant okay. article. Yep. So, um, do we have any articles yet? Uh, I have I have had requests. Mm -hmm. uh, people have sent me articles of what they plan on doing. Um, but nothing's been finalized. But nothing, I have not, as of today, mm -hmm. uh, the, again, this taping Friday the 8th, <laughs> uh, received any uh, petition warrant articles mm -hmm. from okay. anyone yet. Um, but I am aware that there are some out there mm -hmm. uh, that do plan on being uh, submitted. Okay. So... Yeah, so, um, you know, and it's, as I said, the, the ballot this year is pretty, at least on the town side, is mm -hmm. it's pretty straightforward okay. um, with the things that uh, we're looking to do. Sounds good. Yeah. So what else did we do this year, last year? What else did we do last year? Um, you know, again, we're, you know, we're in a period right now in town where development's been very steady mm -hmm. on both the commercial end, industrial end, and on the residential end as well. You know, if you look at uh, revenues from uh, fiscal year 2015, mm -hmm. um, in the as far as building permits go, uh, they were up very. They were up almost 200 percent over from where we had budgeted. Wow! Um, which tells you there's there's a lot of activity mm -hmm. going on, um, and you know I think the biggest challenge going forward is going to be balancing uh, the new development with the need for services uh, right. and making sure that we keep the tax rate steady mm -hmm. in doing that At balance. some point, won't we be looking at trying to move forward on some issues that we've sort of held off on because we're going to have... Such as? Um, maybe some roads. I know that there, we never fully fund roads. Well, um, if you look at the last three budgets, mm -hmm. um, at least since I've been town manager, we've increased our roadway maintenance budget every year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and, and part of the reason we've been able to do that is we've had a very healthy fund balance. Mm -hmm. um, and just so people are aware how, how the fund balance right. gets created is, at the end of every fiscal year, mm -hmm. uh, you take whatever your excess revenues are and your uh, under expenditures, and th those go into the town surplus. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, we're required because of our town policy and then also recommended by the Department of Revenue uh, mm -hmm. Administration to hold back a certain percentage of that surplus for any crisis or emergency events 
that may take place. Our own insurance policy. It is an insurance policy. You know, if a, if a bridge mm -hmm. suddenly collapses, yeah. uh, you're going to need money to fix that. If you have nothing in your savings account, uh, then you're going to have to go out to bond. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so that's what, but at the same time, you don't want to keep so much mm -hmm. back uh, because ultimately those are tax dollars that have been raised. Right. So is that, there's a recommended percentage. There is. is the, yeah, yeah, there's there's a recommended percentage. It's between, well, it's, it's, it's a formula. You mm -hmm. take the total budget, the net yeah. budget of <laughs> the school, the gross budget of the town, and then it's between, you know, five and seven percent mm -hmm. of, of that number. Okay. So, um, so what we've done over the past few years with the excess fund balance we've had is we've returned it into projects like roadway maintenance and put toward more money towards right. improving our roads. Uh, we've put it toward capital expenditures for vehicles such mm -hmm. as, you know, dump trucks, fire trucks, um, ambulance, ambulance. Yeah. Though what we've done with the ambulance now is we've moved it out of our capital vehicle line mm -hmm. and put it in the actual operating budget. Oh, okay. So it becomes part of the default budget. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we have assurance that we're not running on old, broken down ambulances, you know, at some point yeah, in the I future. Have, I have an ambulance comment here. Um, I've had to be in the ambulance a couple times over the last year, and firefighters are wonderful. The EMTs are great. Are there any shocks in those ambulances, those shock absorbers? <laughs> I was, I had minor things wrong, and I'm like, oh, this is painful. Yeah, I I can't comment <laughs> on the specs of the ambulance. I don't I don't know. Well, I uh, highly recommend new ambulances come with shock absorbers. Uh, I will make a note of that. Thank and you. Pass it along to, to Chief O'Brien. Thank you. Uh, when we're doing the specs <laughs> on the, the next one we purchase, um, but yeah, so that's you know we're keeping up with our schedule mm -hmm. of purchasing these vehicles. You know, if you look at the quality of services that the town offers between its police, fire, uh, DPW. Um, cable. Cable, yeah. yeah. I mean, just all throughout town, mm -hmm. you look at the quality of services that we offer for the tax rate that mm -hmm. we do it for, it's impressive. It's very impressive. As, as I made the comment during um, my budget presentation back in November, Londonderry in the entire you know, kind of southern New Hampshire region of, of towns all around mm -hmm. us. We have the second lowest tax rate of any of these towns. The only one lower uh, is Litchfield, and not by much. It's about 30 or 40 cents lower. And they don't lower. have anywhere near the services. No, nowhere near yeah. the services yeah. uh, that Londonderry has to mm -hmm. offer. So, you know, we, we provide a high level of services mm -hmm. at a low tax rate right now. And as I said before, part of the, the challenge going forward is going to be as this new development comes online and the need for services increases, increases is going to be making sure we still maintain a, a steady uh, mm -hmm. tax rate going forward that we can both meet the needs of those new developments, yeah. but also make it affordable uh, for people to live here mm -hmm. uh, as well. Uh, and speaking of making things affordable, um, I know an issue that has been near and dear to you that uh, we've been working on now for the last few years is um, getting affordable senior living mm -hmm. into Londonderry. Yeah. Um, we have a, a lot of senior living communities, but none How which affordable. are deemed yeah. affordable. Yeah. And I believe if you look at the going rates on the, the new 55 plus apartments mm -hmm. along 102 uh, that are being built, uh, I believe the they start around uh, fifteen hundred dollars uh, mm -hmm. for rent. Mm -hmm. For most seniors on a fixed income, for a, for a lot of seniors on a fixed income, that's that's not affordable. No, it's to not. Them. That's the that maybe not even what their social security check right. is. So um, the town uh, has entered into an agreement mm -hmm. uh, with a local developer named Stephen Lewis. Uh, he, his niche, he's, he's one of a few developers in the state that has a niche on affordable senior housing. Um, and it is really a, a, it is a niche in that um, there's a lot of hoops the developer has to jump mm -hmm. through in order to get the tax credits to offer the housing at a much lower uh, rent mm -hmm. um, than would other be 
otherwise be offered through the now, market. You know, the big question with, with this situation is the $10 right. <laughs> purchase price right. of the property. And I have I've yet to come across anybody who understands why. Yes, yeah, so sure. When, so we'll just yeah. so we know. Um, the history here, when I, so when I became town manager, mm -hmm. um, the senior affairs committee, the uh, uh, senior affairs director, Kathy Blash, uh, and, and Joe Green in particular, Councillor Green, uh, approached me and said, we'd really like to get affordable senior housing mm -hmm. into Londonderry. We have a town-owned parcel of land on Sanborn Road that was, uh, a, it's a brownfield site now, it was a former you know, dump, dump, dumping ground, tire dump, uh, tire dump, and uh, the to incentivize a developer to build on that site, mm -hmm. we're basically, you know, the town's willing to offer the land at no cost um, to incentivize them to do it because most developers are going to look at a brownfields site and go. We don't mm -hmm. want to. We don't want to mm -hmm. touch it. Yeah, brownfields because it's it's got it's contamination been, it's, in it's the it's past. It's had contamination has, yeah. in the past. It's had to go through a lot of remediation mm -hmm. to remove all of the mm -hmm. toxic chemicals and everything else. And there's still more to be done. There is, yeah. Okay. And so, um, and so t again, to incentivize a developer to mm -hmm. build on that particular site, um, it was the town's feeling that we'll just offer it to them. Uh, if they're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I knew Stephen from a past life. I knew he had done senior, mm -hmm. affordable senior living projects. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful. If mm -hmm. anyone has a chance to check them out, he's done them in Atkinson, uh, Salem, Plastow, I believe. Uh, you know, I approached him about it and said, is this something you'd be interested in? Now, they still have to do their due diligence environmental wise mm -hmm. on that site, but he's looked at the preliminary environmental reports from the town and determined that it's it's worth at least moving forward and continuing mm -hmm. to explore on so, that particular so site. So if I understand what's going on here, that you, you the town sold that land to him for ten dollars. Correct. But the town's not going to have the expense of cleaning that site thoroughly. It's all on the developer. Okay, yeah. so we should probably think about it more in those terms. That the expenses that he's taking on. All the for expense, that ten dollars, we are saving. All the expense, the liability of yeah. it, and we with, know that can really run pretty high. It can. Yeah. It absolutely. Now, a lot of cleanup on that site uh -huh. has been done already, which the town has paid for all of that because mm -hmm. it's a, a town-owned piece of property at this yeah. point. Um, but any expenses associated with continuing to clean the site up so mm -hmm. it can be developed, mm -hmm. that all goes on the developer. Okay. You know, he he's on the hook for all of that. Mm -hmm. And I should note too that it is, uh, it's an option to purchase. If he doesn't get the permits mm -hmm. for the the site, uh, or, you know, he the doesn't go- The financing through the federal government. Yeah, yeah, all of that, it reverts back mm -hmm. to the town. Okay. So he's, he's not left with uh, a, a piece of property that he purchased for ten dollars mm -hmm. that he can then turn around and sell at at market rate. Good um, to know. The town, it's the town's protected. We would get that back. So mm -hmm. basically, unless unless he goes forward and builds affordable senior housing mm -hmm. on that site, the town gets the property back. Okay. Um, but you know, knowing his reputation, um, provided that the environmental stuff comes back mm -hmm. um, in a way that's acceptable to him. Uh, I, I have full expectations he will move forward with it. Okay. And Londonderry will um, finally have affordable senior living mm -hmm. uh, probably within the next couple of years. That sounds good. We yeah. need that. We yeah, need we that. absolutely yeah. do. And, and it'll be, I think, very good for the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things we haven't touched on is Woodmont. Yes. Was a lot of activity yeah, started so last year. and. Uh, they, uh, of course, broke ground on phase one, mm -hmm. uh, and phase one was an extension of the existing uh, supermarket. And so... Uh, and what's going in there? Ma so next to Market Basket? Next to Market Basket is uh, TJ Maxx and Home Goods, which mm -hmm. are moving over from the Shaw's Plaza. Mm -hmm. uh, Olympia Sports is going in there as well. And then Annie's Hallmark and the liquor store will both be moving over mm -hmm. into that side as well. Okay. So that old building where the old market basket was and mm -hmm. where Annie's and the liquor store currently is, that'll be demolished in the spring. So that'll okay. come down. You'll have the new, uh, the longer mm -hmm. strip up. And then that kind of works its way into what'll be the, the first phase of the new downtown mm -hmm. that'll go in right behind it. And uh, if, if people, 
you know, go up there and take a look, they'll mm -hmm. see that the land's all been cleared yeah. uh, behind there now. In fact, you can see straight through to Pillsbury, mm -hmm. uh, which you never could before. Uh, so, um, so that's the next, the next phase. And I, it's my expectation that uh, sometime this winter, they'll probably come in with some uh, site plans uh, mm -hmm. for the, that next phase of the downtown and uh, people start to, to see it get going. Uh, you know, Imagine I London Dairy with a downtown. I know. I live right? where the downtown used to be. Where was Did that? you know that? The North End. Oh, the, the old, was, yes, the village. That was the, that was that the was village. That was the downtown, yeah. yes. And yeah. we, we had a shoe store. A shoe store, <laughs> really? And a small little market. I still love that area up there. I love driving through that area. The, the village area is such a... To I me, like, a, I like it. it's a historic, yeah. really historic, neat place in, yeah. in Londonderry. Um, but so people, you know, should expect to see over the next year, um, you know, the first, the first, mm -hmm. the starts of that next mm -hmm. phase of, of Woodmont. Okay. And I think there's been a lot of anticipation about it happening and, um, you know, in, in it moving forward. So. Well, going to hit you with another near and dear sure. to my heart. When are we going to get a dog park? Oh. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that, Dodge. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask you, that. I've been incredibly patient. Yes, you have been. Uh, <laughs> Not in, my strong suit. <laughs> in, all, in all seriousness, uh, my hope is that we will have uh, the land identified for mm -hmm. the dog park uh, this year. And um, you can start moving forward very quickly on that. That would be uh, great because I do get asked all the time. Oh, I know there's a lot of people that would, <laughs> that would love to see yeah. it come to fruition mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the big, the biggest thing has been just finding the appropriate piece of, of land right. to put it on. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I think we'll be able to do that mm -hmm. um, the first half of this year. That sounds good. Absolutely. Want to make good. you happy, Dottie. <laughs> Got to keep you happy. And there's another hot topic we have to head on. Sure. The junkyard wars. What's going on? Well, um, you know, it's been quiet. I know. That's lately. why I wonder what's going on because, you know, we're getting closer to that next licensing. Well, the licensing comes frame. in the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you recall, the town council granted the junkyard its license again mm -hmm. um, this past summer um, with its, uh, you know, the conditions that are placed on it. Uh, so um, since that time, as I said, it's it's been quiet, been quiet right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so... You know, hopefully it's it's a situation um, going forward that the, the junkyard operator and the neighbors can continue to work out mm -hmm. amicably. And, um, you know, as a town, we'll continue to do our due diligence in uh, making sure that the junkyard owner complies with the uh, conditions that have been set forth. You know, it, I, I am glad that that's going to happen, that people are going to stay on top of that and make sure that he complies. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, um, I go to Dunkin' Donuts on uh, Route 28. Yep. And when I come through that drive-up window, yep. and my view is just old, rusty trucks, buses, you yep. name it, cars. And it makes me wonder why we shouldn't be looking at all of our junkyard situations and making them a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. We, and I, I've noticed that particular one, yep. it, it seems to me that the vehicles are out there and by the road in front of the fence. And then when we get time to license, everything seems to like move back from there. And yeah. when they go in, they have no issues of compliance. You have to, we, you have to keep in mind too that every, every situation is unique. Mm -hmm. The conditions that have been placed upon the junkyard and hall road are very different than the and, conditions placed right. And they were placed on there by the courts. Well, by the courts, absolutely. Yeah. The courts have placed a lot of the mm -hmm. conditions that are currently in place mm -hmm. there. Um, but also you've got a junkyard that's in a residential neighborhood versus a junkyard that's uh, in place in a commercially, uh, commercially zoned mm -hmm. uh, area of town. Now, that isn't to say that we don't want things to look aesthetically pleasing, even if they are a junkyard. Um, but again, it, they're, they're unique situations mm -hmm. to unique to where the business is, is placed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so that's, you know, it's something that we're mindful of. Mm -hmm. We can only enforce 
what we're allowed to enforce that's on our books for zoning ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, and, so, uh, and so people have to keep that in mind when they see things like that. Well, okay, we're almost out of time. We are almost out of time. And do you have anything quickly that you want to add? Uh, um, again, just that people uh, keep uh, and pay attention to the uh, critical dates coming up of the budget deliberations, the voting uh, dates. Uh, Participate. Absolutely. I can't stress Absolutely. that enough. Participate yeah. in your local yeah. government. And don't be afraid to ask questions. I mean, there are a lot of people who don't understand how these forms of government work because they've come from elsewhere. Right. Ask questions. There you, are no there are no dumb questions. Nope, there you aren't. Know. There aren't. Uh, if so. people have questions about the budget, mm -hmm. show up at the deliberative session, show up at the public mm -hmm. hearing on the 18th. So here's a not dumb question. Yes. Can we look forward to having you come in monthly to keep us updated yes, going forward? Yes, absolutely. So we'll continue with the transparency in government. Absolutely. And I want to thank you for that. And I also want to um, thank the people who are watching and ask them to please call in with their questions. Topics that you want us to cover, we'd be happy to do that. And we do want this to be transparent government. And I know that, that Kevin is the first town manager that wanted to come on on a regular basis. So I really appreciate that because he had this in his blood, TV in his blood back when he was in his teens. So <laughs> that's also one reason. But I want to thank you for watching and we'll be doing another show next month. So I hope you'll tune in for that one and give us some ideas. Great. Thank you.